Hi family, welcome to A Word in Season. I'm Michael and it's so nice to have your company again. I pray that you and your family are safe and well during this time and how exciting it is. Soon we'll be able to meet face to face. I'm really looking forward to the 19th of July. It's, we've had some weird uh, times during this COVID-19 and during isolation. But one of the things that I noticed is that even amongst our family, within our family, is that we had some amazing conversation. And that's what I want to talk about. One of my favorite passages, narrative in the Bible, in scripture, is this narrative about two guys on their way to Emmaus and Jesus joins them. Let me read that scripture and let's get into it. It's from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 onwards. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about 11 kilometers from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things each with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing? What are you talking about together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only, only a visitor, visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? Well, it's the opposite, isn't it? Jesus is the one who knows absolutely everything about what had happened. Yet these two guys have the nerve to ask him, are you the only one who doesn't know? Actually, it's the reverse. But uh, let me continue. What things he asked about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not find him. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted if he, were going, he was going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in with them to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then, then their eyes were open and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and open the scriptures to us. It's just an amazing narrative in a simple conversation. And what really gets me is this confession of the disciples. Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and open the scriptures to us? There is amazing power in conversation. We can have conversation that, are, that enrich, empower lives, and then we can have conversation that actually takes life away. A friend of mine, Sam Aubrey, he said this, gospel message gives life. It does not take away life, it gives life. I just wonder what conversations are you having what kind of conversations are you having with your friends, your peers, your colleagues, wherever you are, even at the shopping center, through the counter? What conversation, even though short it might be, what conversation are you having? Are you empowering? Are you encouraging? Are you giving life? 
Or is our conversation taking life away from those we are having conversation with? There is amazing power in simple conversation. Yes, I agree that you might not want to take every single conversation to the cross and the gospel message. But it is the heart that we accept and the conversation that we engage in that we can actually reveal the gospel message within. Let me finish with this story. A dear friend of mine had a mutual, was the central figure with two mutual friends. All right, so let's say Jack, Joe, and Jim. All right, so Jack and Joe come together to have a conversation. But Jack was not happy about Jim. So Jack was pouring his heart out about Jim to Joe. And in the end, Joe knew who Jim was. And Jim wouldn't be the type of person that Jack was describing. So in the end, Joe just turned around and said, it must have been really hard for you, Jack, but I know Jim, and I know if Jim was here, would apologize for making you the feel the way you did. So let me apologize on Jim's behalf to you. Now, Joe had the opportunity to be part of that conversation, to take that conversation and just fan the anger of the, of the fire that was in him, just to fan it and take it into, a, into another level of disgruntlement, anger or frustration, whatever. But actually, in that situation, I believe Joe did the best thing that he could. He apologized on behalf of Jim. Nothing to do with Joe, but that quenched the anger, quenched the frustration. It actually brought life into the th three that were involved. So let me ask you this question. What type of conversation are you having in your daily walk with Christ? What, are you, what type of conversation are you having with your peers, with your friends, with your colleagues at workplace, wherever you are? Is it giving life or is it taking away life? Remember, we're doing an amazing series, The Power of Encouragement. And I pray that our conversations will be encouraging, will be empowering and life giving to those that we have conversation with. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the power of conversation and I thank you for this amazing narrative. Lord, I pray whenever we're in conversation with those that you put across our path, that our conversations will be life-giving, not life-taking. And Lord, I pray through your spirit that these conversations will be life-transforming. So Lord, we just commit ourselves to you. We just ask that you will give us wisdom and an understanding in the situation, in the times, and put words in our mouth so that the conversation that we have will be full of love, full of grace, and full of your spirit enriching power within. So Father, we thank you for the power of conversation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.